let's talk about Boop, an abstract game about cats on the bed. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we're going to talk about a game that won the Mensa Select Award last year for being a clever, original, interesting game. Uh, and this is a game called Boop by Smirk and Dagger Games. Scott Brady designed this one. He also created Hues and Cues, which is a game that made my kids think that I'm colorblind. But Boop is a game for two players only. It's a game that works with kids age 10 and up, and games take only about 20 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at Boop by Smirk and Dagger Games. Boop is a light game, and it really is an abstract game, but it does have a theme of putting cats on the bed. The, the board is the bottom of the box, and then you place this quilt on top, and it's, a, it's kind of a cushiony, foam-filled comforter, I guess, that really wasn't necessary for the game, but certainly is, it's a fun surface to play on. The stitches divide the board into squares, and you're going to place your kittens on those squares. And what you're trying to do in this game, you win the game by getting three of your cats in a row. So you start only with eight kittens, but you can graduate those kittens up so that they become cats, and you want to get three cats in a row in this game. The other way you could win, although I've never played a game of Boop where someone won in this way, but it's possible, is to get all eight of your cats on the board at the same time. That would be hard to do, I can tell you. Like I said, we haven't been able to do that before. But it's three cats in a row is really what you're trying to do here. And the way that you play this game, it is a two-player game, like I said. You're going to sit across from each other at the table. One player will play the orange cats, and the other will, will be gray. And you just place your kitten on the board somewhere. Now, the trick in this game, it, it sounds sort of like a tic-tac-toe game if we're just talking about getting three cats in a row. But the trick in this game is that each kitten that's placed is going to boop the other cats that are adjacent to it so that they move one space away. And that is the rub here. That is what makes this game a little more complex and strategic is that the pieces on the board aren't static. Each piece that you place is going to move the other pieces that are around it. You'll move your own pieces as well as your opponent's pieces when you place another piece on the board and pieces can get knocked off the board. Now if that happens, they're not out of the game. If I manage to boop a cat off the board he just goes off the bed and back into my supply so I can use that kitten later on but it's one less kitten on the board that I have to work with. Strategically that, that might be something that I want to do but a lot of the time you're trying to get those cats in a row so you want them to stay on the bed until you get your three. The rule book does encourage you to say boop or to meow whenever you do boop another cat and if you've got two cats in a row the way that I have here uh, or I'll place them horizontally. If you've got two cats in a row, there's no chain reaction here. So this second cat is going to prevent the first one from moving, and now all of a sudden I'm able to get my three cats. Now, the, I, I say cats, we're talking about kittens here so far. Once you've got three kittens in a row, like I said, they can graduate to a cat. You're going to take all three of these kittens off the board and then you're going to put three of the larger cats in your supply. Now the cats are interesting too because a cat can be booped by another cat but a kitten will not move a cat. <laughs> the cats are too big so you can't boop a cat with a kitten. Now cats can boop kittens or other cats but so it, it sounds more complicated than it is uh, but it is just a game where each piece that you place is going to move the other pieces unless you're placing a big fellow and then he's going to move everybody. The other pieces can't move him unless they're also big. Whenever you get three in a row, if a kitten is included, that kitten is going to graduate. So sometimes it was quite a strategic move. Maybe if you've got two of the big cats in a row to boop a third cat into that lineup because that's going to take all of them off and then you get to change the one kitten to a cat, but it's not a very efficient use of your pieces because nothing's going to happen to these other two cats except that they get taken off the board. 
Players continue to alternate placing their cats and kittens on the board until one person gets three of those cats in a row and then it's game over. There's no extra turn after there, there are three cats in a row. You're all finished and then you take the cats and kittens off and you can start another game. It's only 20 minutes to play this thing. So you, you might find yourself kind of staring at, at the board and your pieces and trying to decide where to put things, but uh, this game does progress pretty quickly. As the board fills up, you're going to find that placing one cat or kitten will move a lot of pieces on the board. And that really is what we're talking about here when we're looking at what skills are you practicing when you're playing a game like Boop? Because this is very much a visual spatial problem solving game. You are trying to visualize what the board's going to look like after you play your piece and where the next player is likely to play theirs so that you can have an idea about how things are going to be laid out so that you can get those three cats in a row. And it does take a bit of planning in order to do that. And so you're you're kind of, you're, you're planning where to place those cats. You're not really budgeting. Uh, there's a little bit of budgeting maybe in terms of, you know, you, how many cats are going on the board versus the ones that you have in your supply. When do you want to put three kittens so that you can graduate them up to a cat so that you've got three cats now in front of you in your supply that can be placed onto the board. Um, there is a little bit of budgeting, but there sure is a lot of planning. And when we're talking about planning ahead and taking an organized approach to reach your goal of getting those three cats in a row, we are talking about executive functioning skills. And this game is very much about the executive functions. And, and I, I say that in part because, not just because we're talking about planning, but also because there's no unknown information in this game. Both players know what pieces the other players have. They have all of the same pieces. Uh, there's no hidden information and there's no randomness. So uh, th there's nothing is left up to chance. So, so you sort of know what the options are when you play your pieces on the board, which makes it quite a, a pure spatial and executive functioning game. Final thoughts about Boop. Uh, this is a game with great components and great table presence. Like I said at the start, there's no reason to have this quilted mat as your game board that you're placing on top of the box in order to create your bed. There's no reason other than the fact that it's cute and it's fun. Uh, you've got cats that are different colors, but they also have different facial expressions and the cat meeples are printed differently on the back and the front. So you've got a cat tail on the back and their face on the front. The orange and the gray have different expressions. You know, there's no reason to do that other than it's fun to do. So the components, I think, are fantastic and it's a, it's a great theme. You know, I do know, I wouldn't have known this if I weren't like playing so many games, but I, I do know quite a few people who really like games with a cat theme. Go figure. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of that before I started doing this channel, but there are lots of uh, cat themed games, oddly enough, uh, and I have some friends who are just a fan of that theme. But even though it is a game that, that's thematic in terms of getting all of those cats out of the bed, even though it's a game that has these beautiful components, it is really an abstract game, let's be honest. Uh, the, the cat theme is kind of built on top of really abstract mechanics of placing pieces that move all of the other pieces that are next to them. Uh, and so it's it's purely abstract. Like I said before, there's no hidden information and nothing is left to chance. So it's only strategy that's going to allow you to win that game. And, and it's not a game, my understanding at least from my research uh, in preparing for, for this review, is that it's not a game that's been solved, so to speak. It's not a game like tic-tac-toe, where if both players make their the, the best move possible, it's, every game is going to end in a tie. It's not a game where you automatically are going to have an advantage based on being the first player or the second player. Uh, it, it is a, a strategic, abstract game uh, with that great table presence. I also like that it, it, it's an abstract game that has a theme that's interesting for the younger kids, but also the rules are simple enough for the younger kids. It's not a game where you have to remind yourself, well, how does this piece move? How does that piece move? They all move the same. You place one down on the board and everything boops away from it. The only thing you have to remember is that small cats can't boop the big ones. Um, and, and I keep saying cats and I should say kittens when I'm talking about those little fellas, but 
Uh, it's it's a game where the rules are simple enough to understand, but the, there are strategic choices that you're making anyway, even though the rules are simple. And I love that because the younger kids can get it and you get better with practice. So what a super introduction to abstract games. Uh, and, and it's set up in a way that's going to interest, I think, the kids that you want to play it with. But are there downsides to Boop? Well, one downside is that it is a two-player only game. So it's one of those things where you can only play with two. For some folks, that's going to be a deal breaker. But really the thing here, and I, I think this is a plus, but it's going to be a downside for some players. It's going to be a game that might create some conflict between siblings, older and younger siblings, because there's no randomness. So the player who's older is likely to be the one who's going to be better at that forethought and the spatial problem solving than the younger one, which means that the older kids are more likely to win this game. The more skilled player is more likely to win. So if you've had more practice and your friend comes over to play, you're more likely to be able to figure this thing out uh, in a way that allows you to win the game. It's a, it, it, There's no randomness that would throw a monkey wrench into your plans here. It's all player decisions that are guiding this game. And I think that's a plus, but it might be a downside for some families. So what a fun little abstract game. I think that Scott Brady has created something else that's sort of unique and special. And I know that there's been, there's a Halloween themed version of Boop called Boop. And I think I've seen him play testing. I think I've seen pictures online of play tests of a Christmas themed version of the game that might have different layers to the bed. We might be talking, looking at a Christmas tree instead of a flat bed like this one. So I'm not sure what that's going to be all about. But wow, the base version of Boop, we had a lot of fun playing it. And it's one that uh, I, I really do want to play with my niece because I think, she, she, you know, she would, even though she doesn't always play the the heavy strategic abstract game she prefers those dexterity games i think this is one that she would like so uh, if you have any questions or comments about boop or anything else to do with brains on games if you want to meet up at breakout uh, which is only in a couple of weeks as i'm filming this i'm really excited i'm going to get to go to toronto and meet a whole bunch of gamers well uh, you can definitely leave a comment in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca BrainsOnGames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.